All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're looking at the Hibernanka fig. This is a variety review with a, a bit of a tasting, although we're not gonna really be tasting them that much. Um, I wanted to review this particular variety because it is extremely special. And the unfortunate part about doing these variety reviews is that they don't really do well in the YouTube algorithm. So please do me a favor, watch this one all the way through. The reason why I'm releasing this one, and it's going to be only this one this season, um, all the other variety reviews that we've done uh, so far this season and in the future are going to be shorts. So a YouTube short, I also put them on Facebook and Instagram. They're only one minute in length. They also don't really do that well. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is such an important variety that it deserves its own video. And I've said in the past, because um, I know a lot of you guys that follow me and really love this channel want to see these videos um, so I don't want to rob you guys from this if there is ever a variety I think that's extremely worth reviewing and there's not a whole lot of information out there on it then I'm gonna cover it in a video like this otherwise they're gonna be shorts and that's exactly what uh, we've been doing so far this season. So let's talk a little bit about the origin of these figs um, and why they're so important. First and foremost, they're from Spain. Uh, they're, they're mentioned in Ponza's book, Fig Trees of the Balearic Islands. And that's kind of where I get the name Hibernanca from. Um, it's a commercially grown fig there. It's all over Spain. It's even all over Europe. Uh, you can find these in France um, and they have many names. Hivernenka is just, I think, probably the most common name. Uh, there's De La Senora Hivernenka. There is um, Moro de Boo, uh, also in Ponza's book. There is Chituia, Sendrosa, De La um, Coldenam Catat. Um, there is just the fig called Hivernenka. Um, there is, let's see here, Lampira 1, Can Planetes. Um, there are quite a few, and I will list them on my blog, figboss.com, which has a write-up of this variety uh, that goes into much more detail what we're going to talk about today. So if you want to see the synonyms of all the different names of this so you can avoid getting multiples of it, I would highly recommend that. There's also a new one called Montagna Verde. That one turned out to be a Hibernenka. Um, and so we're constantly adding more synonyms to this fig because first and foremost it's an amazing fig amazing figs have many names hardy chicago has a million names celeste has a million names you know on and on and on brown turkey has a million names so you know if it's a good fig it's going to have just a lot of names in general if it's a commercial fig it's going to have a lot of names in general the problem is people like you and i who are collecting them and are hobbyists are not aware of what this fig actually looks like and all the details about it and we just keep adding more names to it so i would like to really make this video part in, in one to stop this naming process that's happening it's just a hibernanka fig so far i see very little differences between them and we need to stop uh that process of uh people spending all this amount of money on a variety that's probably something they already have a lot of you guys probably already have one of these i would bet there's also Verto Long, that's another one. Uh, we'll talk more about that. And we're also gonna look at DN Amaros in a minute as well. So, uh, the reason why, the other reason why this video is so important is that these are incredible figs. These are definitely some of the best tasting figs. When you think about the best tasting figs in the world, you have to think about the Col de Dames and you have to think about Black Madeira. This is right up there with them. Uh, and so if you're going to be a collector that's serious and you want more than just one fig variety, you're going to want to add this to your collection in some capacity. Um, so it's, it's got a, a flavor I would describe a lot similar to De La Roca, if you've ever had De La Roca. It's an uh, intense berry, very thick, jammy. Um, it's sweet and also has a caramel sweetness that is almost syrupy on the inside. Uh, it can have a caramel sweetness, not all the time, definitely in better climates. It dries well on the tree, and when it starts to dry, and it dries fast on the tree, it's a short hang time, um, which means you can pick them off the tree before the rain, even though I didn't do that uh, this time around. Um, you 
you can see them start to dry on the tree and they get these cork tints. And any of these figs where you start to see the cork tints on them, that's a really good sign that they dry well. And not only are they drying well with these cork tints, but they also typically will get this leathery skin to them. And this leathery skin, some people might say is thick, um, but I would describe it as leathery instead and actually pleasant to eat. It makes the figs chewy. So the skin has a chewiness like a LSU tiger, like a um, black Madeira that can be chewy, like a white Madeira number no. one or uh, Paradiso Bronze VS. Uh, there's a couple others that have this awesome chewy skin. And uh, actually the, a lot of the Adriatic figs do it uh, if you get them right. Also even Verdina del Nord can do that and the synonyms of that. Uh, this to me is one of the better parts of a texture of a fig. So it's got great texture, it's thick, it's syrupy, and it also has a great flavor comparable to Black Madeira. Um, so that's why we're, we're discussing this today. Um, now let's talk a little bit about how to identify this fig. Now, the figs are very variable in shape. They're either flat, the flat ones will split pretty often. You can see uh, there's about three on here, four on here that have split. Again, lots of rain, but even without rain, uh, these can split depending on the shape. See how flat this one is? This one's also flat. Look how flat that one is. It looks like almost a, uh, like Black Zadar. But even if they are flat, it doesn't mean they're gonna split, but the chances are much higher if they're flat. This is typical, this is the typical shape I see, somewhere in between flat and teardrop. So they're either pyroform, teardrop shaped, which is perfect, you can't get any better than that. Uh, so the shape is the best way to identify a fig variety. Now next you'll see the cracking. I think that's probably the best way to identify this fig. Secondary is the cracking. This cracks vertically and horizontally and it cracks a lot. You can't stop it. Uh, decreasing the nitrogen in the soil does help, but uh, generally even me doesn't really fertilize all that much. I'm still getting cracking. So this is a feature of this fig. The cracking's not great because once the cracking uh, gets hit by water, you'll start to see mold in the cracking and this will start to absorb water into the fruit where uh, it's rather ripe. So cracking's not good, it's beautiful. The coloration starts off as like a green or yellow fig and then starts to get these browner, maroon, and even purple tones to it uh, down the side. And then the inside here, we'll cut these open, but here's actually one right here, is quite dark red. And I've never seen one so far that wasn't dark red. Very thick, very jammy. Uh, again, it's, it's an exceptional fig. Uh, now, another fig here, similar, you might think, is this one here. This is called DN Amaros. It's much smaller, much, much smaller, but the outside, is rather similar and the shape is rather similar but these are almost exclusively pyroform or oval shape uh, so you won't really see the flat ones of these but the cracking and the colors is so darn similar even de la roca is very similar and can be misleading but um i assure you they are very different even de la roca though has a actually has a similar eating experience so how do I identify the leaves? Um, let's see here. Here's one of my trees actually right next to us. This is probably the perfect leaf right here. I see these all the time, all the time. Um, just get this in your memory here. Same thing with this leaf. So it's usually three lobes. The back here at the top doesn't have any lobes that just come off. And uh, this is like the perfect leaf. The fruits on the tree will be rather uh, pyriform and oval in shape. 
very few will be flat before they start to ripen. Then as they start to ripen, the shape can just turn into whatever it wants. Some of them can be small, but typically these are figs that are uh, about medium to large in, in size. It's another nice bonus. Uh, they ripen late. Uh, in fact, I think they ripen around the same time as really all the other late figs. There's pretty much all the cold adams ripen around the same time. Black Madeira here ripens and Calderona and Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross and pretty much all of them ripen at the same time. And that's about a week or two after you'll get the Adriatic figs. And the Adriatic figs ripen about maybe a week or two after, about two weeks after Hardy Chicago, uh, or three weeks after Hardy Chicago. And then you got another two weeks even after that to get, to get these. And so here in the Philadelphia area in the ground, uh, we'll get our Adriatic figs around September 1st. So these are going to start coming in probably, I would guess, on a mature established tree that with very minimal pruning got through the winter time, you're going to be looking at probably September 15th for most of the late, very, very late figs. Uh, but that's a good thing and a bad thing, depending on where you live. So if you want to grow these in pots, you'll get them earlier. I think I started getting these around the first week uh, or maybe the second week of September in pots. So you can get them a little bit earlier if you can give them a head start or get them out here on the patio like this. Um, I would do so. Now, uh, what are the, okay, the trees are also very productive. I'll mention that. So that's another way to identify it. They're going to have a fig on every node. Um, and the other cool thing we already mentioned is that the hang time is rather short. Um, so you can pick them well before rain, even though I'm getting poured on right now at this point. Um, or I'm getting really wet at this point, uh, you can pick them before the rain. You can also harvest them when they're underripe and they'll still taste good. So that's another really awesome fact about this fig. Let's just try one of these right here. I'm not even sure which one this is. They're all mixed in right now at this point. But, oh, that's really good. But they're all very, very, very similar. There's almost no differences between them that I have seen so far. People are going to think about, oh, which one's more productive? Which one's earlier? So far, it's, it's the same, and I won't know for many years. And anyone claiming that they know the differences needs to have an in-ground tree that's mature for many years. So growing characteristics, we don't really have a good idea of the differences. But De La Senora Hibernenka, I... Don't even really have many trees of it that's very established but the few that i do have seem to be a slight edge better in terms of their berry flavor and their acidity so take that for what you will i think they're all very good though i believe these two here are de la senora hibernenka and they're quite underripe Let's just try this one. Well, so it has a bit of a resinous flavor um, when it is underripe, but it's still pleasant to eat. It's not too resinous. It has a, a more acidity from that, that resin and um, that berry flavor that hasn't really mellowed out just yet and become sweeter from the, um, the sweetness. So the balance isn't really there, but it's still good. And um, I have done a short so far comparing De La Senora Hibernanca, I think two of them, to other Hibernanca figs. And definitely so far that remains true with De La Senora Hibernanca. But that one can't really get much of a, of a difference. So that right there is the, um, is the Hibernanca fig. Uh, the Amaros doesn't taste anything like it. I'll say that. And so it's just really visually that it looks similar and that's it. Um, I would highly recommend studying this fig. Uh, go to the blog post that I talked about, read more about it, see more photos of these and you will, you'll learn a lot more. You'll be able to identify this fig. You should definitely grow one. If you grow black Madeira and you value the black Madeira types for that, whatever it is that you value them for, you're gonna value this the same way. So thanks for watching.
please do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you for the next video. Take care, guys. Now, it is raining, and I picked a whole plate of these, uh, some of them prematurely because of the rain last night and even the day before. These have been through two days of rain uh, with organza bags on them, and the bags do not help. They actually hurt when it rains. So this is um, a variety that, without a doubt, looking at this, has incredible rain resistance. Um, you can see some of them have actually split 